Hi, BookTube. Chelsea's Reads here. We're going to try this again. I have previously recorded, like, half of the first video, and then my, like, camera crashed, and the whole video was just my face frozen and my audio, so who the heck knows what happened. So here we go. We are week four. Um, I'm in a little bit better spirits than I was uh, last week when I posted that video. Um, I was just really down, and I know my energy was kind of off, and I feel bad for that. Um, but, like, this whole week I was supposed to be in South Carolina with my best friend on the beach instead of in Michigan, and there was snow yesterday, um, so it was a big bummer. Um, I did have a couple hard days this week, um, that I was just really having some problems coping and stuff, but I think we're better now. <laughs> I hope so. I did get through quite a bit of reading. I have a very, very small book haul this week. Only two books. The first one um, that I picked up was Volume 7 of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers graphic novel series. It's by a ton of people, mostly Higgins is the name that is the first one, so Kyle Higgins is the writer. Um, this is part of the Shattered Grid arc. Um, I'm a big Power Rangers fan. There are currently two Power Rangers graphic novels running. This one's the Mighty Morphin, and there's also the Go Go Power Rangers line. Um, I haven't read them yet because for graphic novels, I really do kind of have to be in the mood to, for them, and I just haven't been in a graphic novel mood lately. Um, but when I do get into it, I'm probably actually going to read the Tomb Raider series first because I've had it longer. Um, I actually just donated a bunch of my graphic novels because I just realized that I'm not as big of a fan of them as I was previously. So unless they're, like, stellar, I'm not going to keep them. Um, that was my wine clinking. Um, because, of course, I have an emergency supply of wine in my bedroom. Because why not? <laughs> um, yeah, but volume seven, um, I somehow missed it. So I have up to volume nine in this series right now that I haven't touched yet, but I missed volume seven, so I decided it was time to pick it up. I really like the artwork on these, and like in the back you can kind of see that there's um, rangers from other series. Jungle Force, I think, is one of them. No, it's not the Jungle Force ranger, that was the Samurai ranger. <laughs> um, I'm not too well versed in the lore of Power Rangers past the original series, because that's what I watched. I was going to start at Zio. Um, when I finish my rewatch of the original Mighty Morphin series. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, Power Rangers is a graphic novel, and apparently they're pretty decent. Like, I've heard really good things about it, and I, when I, I do get into it, I think it'll be good. They're not very long, but average size. I think this has five issues in it, four or five issues contained in it, so we'll see how it goes. The second and last book that I bought this week, so the, I guess it was a very short book haul, was Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. Uh, my cousin and I are, have been reading the Harry Potter series together. She lives in North Carolina, so we've been uh, FaceTiming each other. She is 13 years old now, 12 years old. No, she's turned thir she'll be 13 in three days. <laughs> um, off the recording of this video, she'll be 13. And she wanted to read keep reading books together when we finish Harry Potter. We're on the seventh book right now. And I asked her to pick whatever she wants to read next. And actually, her mom really wants her to read this book. Um, I read it when I was ten, and I think that's actually a good read age for this book. It's about Margaret Simon. She uh, has She's moved from New York to like, the suburbs, and her and her group of friends are all obsessed with boys, and who's going to wear a bra first, and who's going to start the period first. You know, that kind of stuff. And, um, I just think 13 might be a little bit too, a bit too old for this book, but it's still decent, and I think she's gonna like it. Uh, my copy from my childhood is long gone between me and my sisters reading it. I'm pretty sure we passed it on to the neighbor, like, it just never came back. Um, so, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom was, um, my second book that I bought this week, and the last book that I bought this week. For books that I read this week, the first one that I read was What Janie Saw by Carolyn B. Cooney. Um, it is a short story. It's book 4.5 in the Janie Saga, and it is an ebook exclusive. So I read book four last week, um, and I was not impressed. And this book was even, book, this novella was even less impressive. So What Janie Saw is a music video. 
like this really popular band makes a music video based on her finding her face on the milk carton and, and her um, choosing to live with her kidnapped parents. Um, and that's the whole short story, is that she's very upset. And then people get over it, and then she's like, but I'm not over it. Um, and Janie sucks. Um, Janie wants to go away to college, and when she goes away to college, she doesn't want to use her real name, because she doesn't want this to be haunting her. And that was, uh, book four and a half, what Jamie saw. The next book that I read this week, of course, to follow up with that awful book, was book five, um, Janie Face to Face by Carolyn B. Cooney. This is the final book in the Janie saga. It's actually a lot longer than, um, the rest of the books. So, Janie Face to Face is Janie in college. She goes by Jane now, and then she uh, still uses Johnson. Um, we do hear from the kidnapper, Hannah, who's now, like, in her 30, late 30s at this point in the story. Um, and she's psychotic. She blames Janie for all of her bad luck and everything, so she says she's gonna get back at her, um, and that's the entire book is her trying to get back at Janie. Janie whines about stuff, um, this true crime reporter, this true crime writer decides he's gonna write a book about the kidnapping case, so he wants to interview Janie and her family, um, but Janie says no, and then her entire family is like, but this might be how we find Hannah, so they all talk to the true crime writer, except for Janie. This guy pretends to be, like, interested in her and wants to date her, but he's really just researching her. And then she gets married. Um, but she gets married as Jenny Spring, not Janie Johnson, because suddenly she loves her, her birth family, and, you know, screw the people that raised her and didn't know she was kidnapped this whole time. This whole series sucked. This book did not need to be this long. Um... I guess I just like to torture myself because I don't know why I read all five books when they were all terrible. I do not recommend. I only gave this one one star. It was whole series, maybe two stars, because they took a premise about finding out you were kidnapped and then squeezed every drop of life out of it and made it awful. Awful. The next book that I read this week was another ebook. It is Campfire by Sean Sarlis. Um, Campfire is, I give it three stars, and I think that might have been a little too generous, because it's, it's another book that had a really good premise, and the execution was really sloppy. There were just so many characters in it that I didn't know who was who, and at the, like, 75% mark, like, this is about this guy Brian, and I was like, who's Brian? Have we heard about Brian this entire book? Um... I don't read a lot of ebooks either because I can't really, like, my eyesight, like, it just strains my eyes too quick and, um, I can't read as long what looking at a phone as I can in a book. So I tried to binge read it because it was from the Libby slash Overdrive app and it was due soon, so I kind of, like, flew through it. Maybe I missed some details, but my biggest issue was that none of the characters really stood out. They were all kind of, like, cardboard cutouts and it was, like didn't care about anybody. Um, the, the premise is a big group of people who all are connected in some weird way go camping on a mountain, and three of them tell stories around the campfire, and suddenly, like, during the day, they're seeing these stories come true, which, again, is a really cool premise, um, and the horror scenes were really good. Um, but then at the, the ending, like, the twist at the end, was kind of stupid and it really just reminded me of the, the, the movie Scream and it was ridiculous and not good but like the good scenes were good and the bad scenes were like really bad I just feel like Sean Silas needs a better editor like this was his debut book and it was good for a debut like I said the, the premise was interesting the horror what parts were good it's just his characters were the same. Like, they're all kind of boring, and I didn't really care about any of them too much. Um, and there was, like, all these little threads, like when the one lady told the story about the girl ran around the, down the mountain, and the main character was like, well, did they make it? 
did she survive? And then the aunt was like, we don't know. And she had like this weird look in her eyes. And I was like, oh, this is going to like come into play later. And it like never did. So I don't understand if it was supposed to be a red herring. Because why would it be? Like it didn't matter. Um, but it was pretty decent. I would definitely pick up another book by him if he does write another one. Uh, just to see if it's any better. Because this was a solid three stars. Like it wasn't bad. But it could have been so much better. Next up, I took a break from fiction and I read a nonfiction book, The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher famously played um, Princess Leia in the Star Wars series. And this book was um, supposed to be like her diaries of that she wrote on set. And some of it was. Um, I don't want to say it was bad because like it's Carrie Fisher and I love her and... Like, I love Star Wars, but this, like, wasn't good. <laughs> this was another three stars for me. Um, it just didn't feel authentic. Like, it felt like she had to get to a certain word count. So she added, like, silly, useless stuff, or she'd repeat herself. Um, this is actually written right before she died. And she keeps, like, referencing dying in here, so it's very sad and melancholy. She's like, you know, when my time comes, or after I pass. Um, and this was also written you know, around the time Last Jedi was coming out, and it was definitely just to cause sensation, you know, she was in the headlines again, so it was really obvious that that's why she wrote it, um, because it does detail her affair with Harrison Ford while she was 19, and he was married and old, or older than her, uh, but, like, the parts that were actually from her diary, I thought were really cool, um, because it's about liking someone that, you know, you can't be with, or that it's, like, you know, forbidden romance part, and, like, we've all, like, some of us never gonna like us back, so that part was kind of cool, and, like, I felt, felt that, um, but, like, the rest of it was so dry and boring and, yeah, um, I've not read any of her other stuff, but I heard her other books are better and just have a better voice in them, so I'd totally be willing to give those a try. Um, but this was like three stars, three and a half stars. It's still Carrie Fisher. Um, it was neat to hear about the behind the scenes parts of Star Wars, and I think that's what I was looking more for. Um, she has very flip flapping, opposing views about Leia. Like, it starts off, she's like, Yeah, I am Leia. Leia is me. Like, it's cool. But then, other parts, she was like, You know, it sucks, and I'm always going to be Leia. And I was like, Wait a minute, you just said you were cool with it. It was obviously a rush job to get published, um, but if you like Star Wars and you like Princess Leia slash Carrie Fisher, it's probably worth looking at. So I was just realizing how bad I need a haircut. This is what quarantine does to you. Like, these are my bangs, guys. <laughs> get me out of here. Alright, the next book that I read this week was uh, Alice in the Country of Diamonds, Bed on My Heart. Um, this is a light novel because it's based off of, um, manga. So the manga is by Quinn Rose and the novelization is by Sana Shirakawa. Um, it's pretty squat and short, like the prologue is in manga form. Um, and so is the epilogue. And I had read a couple of the other titles in this series, if you call it. They're kind of related and they're kind of not. Like, Alice in the Country of Hearts introduces how Alice gets into this world. It's obviously an Alice in Wonderland retelling. Um, then there's Alice in the Country of Clover, and she's in a whole other country with the same cast of characters, though, but the rules are different. And I've read, like, maybe two of the Country of Joker novels. Um, this series is based on a dating game. So in every mini series within the overall series she ends up with someone different um this wasn't bad but i think i just would have preferred it as a manga there was no reason to put it into prose form because there was no like descriptors in here there was no real like development of character um so in this one alice somehow switches over to the country of diamonds and the rules are different here too blood dupree who's your mad hatter character um, is younger than what she's used to. He's kind of starting off. He's a mob boss, which is um, what he is in all the other ones. But Alice is so stuck on how things were in Clover in Hearts that she's not 
like grasping the country of diamonds much better. The queen is different in here. It's not Vivaldi. Viva, well, whatever her name is, I call her Vivaldi. Um, the twins are adults and not children in this world. Elliot, who's the March Hare, is um, a lot quick, but quicker with a sugar finger. There's a lot of guns. Um, there was like a weird kind of love triangle, but not really. Um, it just didn't need to be a prose novel. It would have worked fine to manga, and then they could, the story could have been like a little bit longer. Um, because there wasn't much description, and I don't know if it's like, um, it's just how Shirakawa, Shirakawa, I don't know, I don't know if that's how they write, or if it was just that, that's how they translated it or whatever. I have not played the games, but after reading quite a few of the manga, I am interested in how the games are. Like, the artwork's really good in the manga and stuff, so I'm wondering if that's how it is in the game. And um, I'm willing to try those out, though, but I don't think I'll ever pick up another light novel. I tried Ancient Mages Bride's um, light novels, and I just was not into them either. So this is another, like, three stars for me. Um, I definitely suggest picking up the mangas first before I pick this one up, so you kind of get an idea, because they don't really give any explanation or backstory at all. Uh, but it wasn't bad. It was okay. And the last book I read this week is Daughter of Darkness by V.C. Andrews. So I talked a little bit, I think, in last week's video, or the week before, about V.C. Andrews. Um, she died in the early 80s, having only written the Flowers in the Attic series, and started- oh, and she read- wrote Heaven, and she started, like, Dawn and a couple other ones, and the family hired a ghostwriter, Andrew Niederman, to finish it. Um, so by this time, this book was published in 2010, so they got on the vampire hype train, like they, they took that Twilight train and drove it to the ground. <laughs> so V.C. Andrews, like, herself had nothing to do with this. This was totally Andrew Nierman, and this was terrible. This was like, a one star. Um, I did not finish it, I only made it like 40%. Um, literally, like, right here, right here, and in here. They really emphasize, um, oh yeah, down here too, in this red text, they really emphasize the vampire part, and at 40%, uh, our main character, Lorelai, didn't know she was a vampire, or that her, da her daddy was a vampire. So, Lorelai is just turned 16. She has three sisters. Her older sister, Brianna, leaves because she has to go fulfill her des destiny. Uh, she finds out her maid is actually her dad's sister. And her maid, like, feeds them some weird food so they don't eat real food. Um, and her other sister, and I forget her other sister's name, or whatever, tells Lorelai, Alright, you're old enough for me to start your sexual education. Ooh. And then suddenly, like, literally overnight, Lorelai, like, becomes hot. And she walks into school and people are like, ooh, who's this new girl? Like, is she so hot now? And Lorelai loves being hot, so she stands... She strips naked and starts, like, playing with her boobs in the mirror. And her sister's like, don't get cocky. And apparently the sisters all want their dad, their daddy to like them best. They are all adopted. And the dad specifically chooses pretty babies from the orphanage. Like, he has a thing with the orphanage. I, like, skimmed the ending to see like, where the story was heading, and I didn't miss much, apparently. Um, but the, apparently, the, like, the dad grooms the girls to be able to go pick up men and then bring them home for him to eat. I don't know. Um, it was really disgusting. I think what really bothers me, it's a grown man talking about the sexual awakening of a 16-year-old girl, and it just, it doesn't sit with me, it kind of turned my stomach a little bit. Um, and I just want, it's like, female vampy goodness. Like, look at that cover. That is intense. That's a, that's a look. And I didn't get that. I didn't get sexy, confident female vampires. I didn't get girls struggling with being a vampire, like, morals kind of a thing. I got a girl that wanted her daddy to love her better than everyone else. The dad, like, encourages the daughters to be, um 
like competitive and jealous of each other. Like that's his big thing. He's he like really promotes sibling rivalry. And I don't know, it just kinda like made me squeamish and I really like it very much. <laughs> and that was it for this week, guys. Boom. Um, I'm about halfway through the second book in the House of Night series right now, so I'll probably finish that today. Then next I was gonna read this the second book in the Projector of the Small Quartet. And that's only gonna take me about a day or two, and then after that I'm gonna read uh the Hocus Pocus book and sequel. Probably pick up the Welcome to Nightville scripts after that. Maybe a romance after that. Um, just to kind of give you a preview of what's coming up probably next week. Um, then yeah, I hope everybody is staying happy and healthy. We did find out that a couple of my family members did get COVID, um, but they're all doing good. Like, they didn't, they didn't have to be hospitalized, they're just dealing with it at home. My uncle's already over it, and I think my aunt is on her way to recovery, so it's all good here. That being said, I hope all of you guys are taking care of yourselves, and uh, see you next week. Bye.